it's time to get surgical. Hi, welcome back to St Blazy Model World. In our last Code 3 project, we looked at how to turn this into this. Now with a new donor vehicle in place, it's time to create yet another Code 3. And this time, we're going to get surgical as we remove most of the roof. Now if you missed the first video on taking one of these EFE bus models apart, you'll find a link on the screen now. Purely by chance, the donor model that we're using on this occasion is exactly the same version as the one we used in our first video on Code 3, and so there's no need for me to repeat some of the steps that I told you were important such as taking photographs of all four sides of the vehicle to reproduce accurately any detail on our finished Code 3 product. Now last time we created a training bus and that didn't involve any surgery but this time we're going to create another service vehicle the tree lopper and these were used by bus companies to cut tree branches where there may be a danger that uh, double deck buses would come into collision with treetops. And for this project we are going to remove part of the roof because on a real tree lopper the top deck would be used by a gang of people cutting the tree branches in the appropriate places. You can see that I've already marked on the donor model where I want my cuts to be and it will involve slicing the roof here so this portion will be retained and all of the window pillars between there and the rear of the vehicle and round of course on the other side. The interior of this model is also being reworked in a slightly different fashion but with the same techniques and methods that I showed you in Code 3 Video 1. And you can see here that I'm going for a green seating which was typical of the period. But again we've done away with the red plastic interior that can be seen here on the upper deck. Looking at the upper deck in detail you can see that I've only applied detail to the first part of this uh, interior, the first third or so of it. And that's because later on in this project we're going to cut this away uh, and replace from here to the rear of the vehicle with a false floor. The reason for doing that is that the rear end of the upper deck of a tree lopper would typically have all of the seats removed. And whilst it is possible to cut all of the seats away individually, it's much easier to splice the floor and replace it with some balsa wood or plastic card to make a false floor and we'll get round to that later on in this video. Now as well as the interior you'll have noticed that I've already started to give the lower deck of this bus a similar treatment to our first Code 3 project. It's been painted yellow which was typical of the uh, period for which I, I wish to recreate this model in and on this model I've decided to not apply a white band in between the two decks as I did with the training video uh, with the training bus rather uh, just to give you some idea of comparison. Now because in this project a large part of the roof is not going to be present or be used I haven't bothered to strip it all back to bare metal. So now it's time to fire up my cutter as we remove most of the roof on this donor model.
So there we are, we, the uh, roof now removed. A couple of things. Firstly, you may be able to notice on the camera some uh, blistering of the paintwork here. And that indicates a build-up of heat as the cutter was doing its job. You'll also notice some small filings and cuttings uh, around here as the cutter cut through the metalwork. So it's important to remember eye protection and if you're not confident about this using some uh, industrial gloves or some sort of other hand protection as well. If you're a younger viewer please ask somebody a bit older to complete this step for you. What remains now is this and it's the roof and uh, upper deck section. We've cut it away we're going to have to apply some fire work to the areas here where the window pillars were to smooth things down and then we shall set about covering this piece in primer. Right here we are a short time later a little bit of work done. Uh, I should say right now that uh, in, between in, the in between filming the first part and the second part of this video it's now lashing down with rain and as all of this stuff is done in uh, the porter cabin outside that I'm lucky enough to have uh, you probably hear the rain on the soundtrack apologies model makers can do very uh, great things but we cannot change or stop the weather so you'll see now that the roof has been cut away uh, very simply we've uh, just taken out most of the roof there the rear two-thirds of it have gone and uh, what remains has had a, a coat of yellow paint uh, and uh, just some rough outline of detail ready uh, for the finishing touches. The lower deck of the vehicle, again, yellow paint, exactly the same as I did on the first Code 3 uh, project that we did, which was the training bus. And uh, as for the interior, well, we'll just separate those. The lower deck has been given same sort of treatment uh, as I did on the uh, first Code 3 video. Uh, we've got rid of all of the red plastic and uh, applied a bit more detail to the uh, areas that you're going to be able to see once the vehicle is reassembled. On the top deck it's a slightly different issue. We're only actually going to use the top third, or the front third I should say, of the top deck and that's why I haven't bothered to treat anything past uh, this area here where you would come up the stairs and around you'd go and that's because all of these seats are going to have to go. In a real tree lopper they wouldn't be there, there would just be a flat floor which would be a working area for the gang cutting down the trees as they move along the road. So when it comes to removing these seats we've got a couple of options. One option clearly is to take a, a cutter, a Dremel type of cutter and remove all these seats but it's very time consuming and also because of the nature of the manufacture of this piece you'll be left with these areas here um, it's much easier I find simply uh, to cut the area uh, that you want to keep so we'll have this here as an area that will end up in the finished model everything from here to here will go into the box of spares I won't discard it I never discard anything you never know when any of this stuff is likely to come in handy Now because we're only using uh, the front uh, third of the roof, we're only going to need the front third of the glazing. So we've got to chop that as well. So you can see here I've marked a line where I'm going to make my cut. This is the portion that will be kept and put into the model. This is the portion that will be uh, put into the spares box. So if I just put the uh, roof and the glazing together you can see how my line works all I did simply was to uh, put one inside the other there's my line just across there that's where the cuts gonna be so we'll be left with some glass that we can use and some we won't use uh, it's pretty straightforward stuff so what we'll do now is we'll uh, we'll cut this uh, 
glass in half and then we'll move on to cutting the floor. So that's the glass cut and uh, the cutter of course has left some burring here so we'll just uh, we'll just take that off with uh, either a scalpel or a Stanley knife uh, and just make sure that we've got a smooth edge there uh, and that will sit inside our roof here. Now it's time to deal with the floor. Same process really. We're just going to take our cutter uh, and make an incision between there and there. Now what possibly doesn't show up quite so well on the camera is that that is not actually a direct straight line. I'm going to cut it as a straight line starting from here because this is the furthest point back and then I'll tidy up what's left of that seat uh, once I've got my usable front section of interior deck here. So there we are, that's the line cut and we're left, of course, uh, as I knew we would be, with a tiny portion of seat uh, just there. We're going to have to get rid of that. So we'll just uh, take that off with the cutter uh, and then we'll see where we're going to go from there. So that's worked out quite well. We've got our roof, our glazing and the front piece of seating. They'll live under here and uh, what we've got to do now is to consider options for a blank piece of flooring rearward of this part here um, and uh, we've got options for that. We can use some plasticard, uh, we can use some plywood, uh, whatever we tend to have lying around in our spares box. So we've made all our cuts and uh, smoothed everything down with a needle file just to make sure there are no sharp edges. And uh, in the first video uh, where I talked about breaking one of these models down, you remember I talked about the poles that run through these models and the fact that I don't put them back on reassembly. And of course I haven't done uh, on this model either. Uh, so let's just have a quick look at where we are. We've got, uh, you can probably see in there, we've got our, our glazing. Sorry, my hand's shaking a bit. Obviously, uh, bit tired um, <laughs> there we are and um, that's in there now bit of glue gun spot of glue that's glued in that's okay with the remainder of the top deck what I've done is something slightly different because we haven't got a complete top deck and a complete set of glazing and a whole roof to work with I've actually glued this uh, portion of the top deck to the top of the uh, lower deck glazing here. You can see it's a solid uh, plastic surface apart from the holes where those poles run through. You can see the one at the back there and there, there would be one at the front there. I'm going to fill that in when we finish this uh, project only because you will actually be able to see it. But all I've done is uh, again the glue gun, uh, spot of glue on the bottom of this and it's glued directly onto this surface here. So there we are, that's where we are at the moment. Now what we've got now of course are two, uh, two halves of the vehicle. So we'll just sit one on top of the other uh, temporarily. We haven't finished yet but it's going to give you an idea of how this uh, project is developing and what, what sort of thing we're aiming for at the finish. So that's the profile of the project. Um, and it, you can see where we've cut away the roof clearly. You can also see that we've still got to put in a section of floor from the piece that we cut away to the rear of the vehicle because uh, that wouldn't be there. We can do that, we can put a false floor in with some balsa wood and the other thing that we could do is to simply is to paint the uh, top of the glazed surface but of course that does still leave us the hole here uh, for the, uh, the pole. Uh, there are so many ways you can do these things. I tend to do you have to forgive me, I never really tackle the same thing twice in the same way, only because I'm forever experimenting and trying to find a better way. One of the things we could have done with this was uh, put in a small piece of plasticard or balsa wood on the underside of this surface, filled in this hole, and then we could have painted the, uh, the top of the uh, interior glazing on the lower deck. But that would leave us with a step here. Would it matter? Probably not. Are you ever going to see it? 
well, unless you're showing it the model to somebody close at hand, no. Um, is, there are just different ways you can do it. Um, what I'm going to do with this model is to um, use some leftover balsa wood and create a false floor, which will be glued on top of this surface here. That will remove that hole then, and you won't see it. That hole is going to be filled uh, with some um, putty filler or model filler, something like that. I haven't decided yet. And uh, that's where we are. So that leaves us uh, with our tree lopper as it is at the moment. So the next thing to do is to deal with the floor. We'll make a start on that and come back to you shortly. Okay, there we are. There's our false floor glued in. It's a little bit of a patchwork quilt. That doesn't matter. It's going to be coloured. Uh, you won't see the joins. And just by a bit of variation uh, that was put in using uh, a bit of Humbrol uh, Brit, uh, Humbrol Brit Fix uh, poly cement, polystyrene cement, there we are. Uh, not a great fan of that stuff, I have to say. If you've ever tried to build a kit with one, you'll know that it comes out in globules. Uh, but for this job, good enough. So we'll get uh, some colour applied to this once it's dry and see how it shapes up. So there we are, there's um, our patchwork uh, balsa wood false floor put in with uh, some uh, paint added to it now. Um, I've gone for a couple of different uh, shades there just because I like the realism of it. I think uh, often models can be far too sterile um, and that's particularly true of model uh, buses. Um, I've spent most of my working life in this industry with buses and coaches and uh, it's true to say that buses are very rarely spotless or unblemished or undamaged and I try to recreate that in uh, the models that I produce. So while our uh, false floor and its paint are drying and bearing in mind what I've just said when we did the first one of these, I talked about taking the model back to bare metal, the donor model back to bare metal and doing a respray. And that is often how you would do it. But on this model, uh, I've gone for some other realism, uh, bearing in mind my last statement. And uh, on the roof of this bus, I actually left some of the previous uh, colouring. And it's created these ridges here. Um, it's very, very deliberate on my part to have done this. And that is because in the real world, buses are damaged and repainted, often locally at a garage. They don't really, bus companies now, don't really have central works like they used to many, many years ago when I first started. So these repairs, running repairs as we'll call them, often done at a local garage. And, um, you know, you can just imagine that this type of vehicle, a tree lopping bus, uh, by very nature of its existence, would be uh, crashing into tree branches, often needing uh, a quick local repaint to, to stop the bare metal rusting. And this is the sort of effect that you would end up with. So that's what I've gone for on this model. Well, there we have it. Uh, floor in. Everything dry, the model's been put back together, and there is our tree lopper. All that remains now is to finish off by applying the detailing, and uh, you'll see a link for a video on how to do that at the end of this video. And uh, that's the project almost complete. So there you have it. Two Code 3 service vehicles in 176 or double O gauge scale representing models that you can't buy direct from a mainstream manufacturer and that's all really that is required a bit of imagination a target in mind what you want the finished product to be and setting about a different way of doing things the item that we started with is very different to the item that we finished up with and this can apply particularly to uh, models of uh, trains and uh, buses uh, but also 
uh, buildings it works very well if you start with a building kit don't just think about how it's intended to be put together think about how it can be adapted to create what you need and to give your model diorama its own individual appearance that's it for this project this video i hope you've enjoyed it please remember to subscribe and give us a thumbs up and we'll see you again very soon at St Blasey Model World.